Hello and welcome to COVID Conversations here on WNCU 90.7 FM. I'm Kimberly Pierce Cartwright, your host, and we're using Zoom to talk about how COVID-19 is affecting our world. And the impact of COVID-19 has been felt everywhere. People are out of work. And in many cases, people are facing things like food insecurity and other obstacles that they never, ever, ever had to face before. Now we're gonna talk about food insecurity today with our guest and his name is David Juarez Torres and he is the director of Durham Community Food Pantry. David, it is my good pleasure to have you as a guest today. Thank you, Kimberly, for having me. Thank you for taking out time. I know that you are so busy during this time. And I, I just want to mm -hmm. uh, where I met you. I was over in uh, Lakewood in the shopping center. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a food pantry there that the, um, the Catholic Charities of Raleigh sponsors. And I just happened by and I saw people coming by picking up packages of food. There, there were no questions. Um, they were just there. And, People were helping them with water, with, with big boxes of food, and people left with a great deal of gratitude. So let, let's start by talking about um, Catholic Charities of Raleigh and what it is, an overall umbrella. Yeah, so, so um, you know, just to provide, and I know when I first started, it was a little confusing for me, but um, during Korean Food Pantry, we are Catholic Charities of the Diocese of Raleigh. Um, we are a very specified and specialized program, hence the name Durham Community Food Pantry. Um, Dur uh, so Catholic Charities of the Diocese of Raleigh, um, its coverage is 54 counties. So it is a little over half the state. It spans from Alamance County in the west all the way to the coast in the east. And those counties are divided further into seven regions. And so those offices serve the those local populations of those counties that they serve. So Durham Community Food Pantry is primarily served Serving Durham and Orange counties, as well as um, the other counties that fall into the Piedmont region. That's a lot of counties, and that's a lot of people. Do you, do you have like an estimation about the number of people that you reach? Well, in the last year alone, um, we served almost fifty-eight thousand people throughout our seven regions and our different programs. And how how is it that you um, became residents over in the Lakewood Shopping Center? So that was um, a move that was done before um, I officially joined in February of this year. But before it was Durham Community Food Pantry, it was the Durham Office of Catholic Charities. And um, so it was a small operation. The food We still did have food services, but it was more of a closet pantry operation. And so um, when it was looked into as to how can Catholic Charities make the large, biggest impact in Durham, it was found that food insecurity was unfortunately, and it's the reality in a lot of places, it was the biggest need in the community. So along with identifying the largest need in the community, um, and we got together with partners, our local parish partners and, and, other, and other grant and fundraisers to help make that dream a reality. And it's what came into Durham Community Food Pantry as it is today. So, I mean, it's just very unfortunate that there are so many people hungry. Can you, can you talk about um, maybe the uptick of people coming in to try to secure for their families? What has it been like since, since COVID-19 has, has um, just taken over so much of our lives? Mm -hmm. Well, to answer the, you know, the first part of the question, so food insecurity is always going to be a very unfortunate reality. There's no, um, I guess you could say, upside to it. I guess you could say the upside to people coming and seeking services for us is that these are, um, you know, people and families that are suffering from food insecurity. And I guess you could say the uptick is that they found us. They're able to get help. And so it's better that they get help than continuing with food insecurity. And so... Our goal, of course, is to make ourselves obsolete. That is our dream. That is our goal. That is our vision. So, but so COVID-19 has, as everyone knows, has severely and exponentially um, expanded and augmented that 
need that food insecurity in, and not just food insecurity, but everything, homelessness, um, home security, every kind of insecurity under the umbrella of insecurity. Um, if, just to give a comparison, uh, pre-COVID, we were serving around a thousand individuals a month. Uh, now we're up five times that, so we're serving an average of 5,000 people a month. That is so many people who don't have food. So where does the food come from? So the food comes. Mm -hmm. The food does come from a variety of sources. Part, uh, part of it being purchased and part of it being donated. So uh, we have some of our larger partners, such as such as the Food Bank of Central and Eastern North Carolina Durham Branch, uh, our interfaith uh, interfaith food shuttle. Um, and we also have um, wholesalers who we order from as well, but then we also have our um, our parish partners and other faith-based group who support us by holding food drives, and they contribute thousands and thousands of pounds every month uh, to be able to have us continue. Because the reality is, we can't purchase all the food that we're able to distribute. So they they support us immensely by being able to provide that service, even in the midst of. Uh, COVID, they were able to, we were all able to come together and figure out the best way to do it and also do it safely as well. Can we talk about your operation? Because the day that I was there, everything was moving like clockwork. And mm -hmm. like, if you're there on a Tuesday, there's nothing. And if you're there on a Wednesday, it's like this, this pop-up operation that, that um, there's just volunteers buzzing around to help people. So talk about how it all comes together. So, um, of course, with COVID, um, we don't allow the public into the building. And even if we could, we would be able to because we're, we're brimming with storage. Every, every little inch is taken up with food storage. Um, so we do what's curbside pickup. And as you were there, um, uh, Kimberly, as you saw that there was also a section on the other side for people who have no transportation or that walk up. And so, um, so yeah, like you said, it can be very quaint and quiet. And then all of a sudden, Wednesday and Thursday get there and it's, and it's a whole operation. So we do do curbside pickup and it's actually very beneficial that we're located in Lakewood Shop Plaza because it does allow for that um, kind of operation. Nobody was ready for COVID, but let's just say that that puts us in a little bit more favorable position to be able to conduct uh, um, our operations in a safe manner. And so uh, we had to reinvent we kind of had to reinvent the wheel in some of the instances, in a lot of instances, and we had to switch operations. We had to look at um, um, everything with primarily safety and security. Um, and so that included uh, safety protocols that also included Catholic Charities as a whole, con um, consulting with pandemic specialists to review our, um, our operations to make sure that we're doing the safest thing possible. And so through that, we you know, it was, it was, uh, it was a little bit of a struggle at first, just like any other operation was struggling at first, but now we are a very well-oiled machine as you saw last time. And so, um, it's, it's been going very successfully. We've, um, we're able to process over 200 vehicles in a three hour span. So that's, I would say that that's a pretty good working machine and our volunteers are so dedicated and such hard workers and they're just experts in their, in this field now. So it's, it's awesome to be able to have everything working together. Yeah, I wanted to talk about volunteers. So how can people get involved if they're interested in helping? So they can definitely, they can contact our volunteer coordinator, uh, Maura Roberts. Um, they can either call um, or email her. If uh, you go to our website, um, Durham Community Food Pantry, you can find all of our contact information, including myself and all other staff. And, um, and yeah, so they can just make that first initial reach out and then she'll get back to you real quick. So tell me about um, the people who, who come to get the service. How are they notified? Is, is there a list or can people, anybody just walk up and say, I'm hungry, and then they get a box of food? Well, yeah. So um, interestingly, you know, with COVID, um, I think the, the main um, avenue of, of knowledge is always going to be word of mouth. You know, I got help. And of course, if, you know, usually the reality is that if there is an individual family that's food insecure, they're going to have knowledge of other families or individuals that are food insecure. And so word of mouth is always the biggest wildfire. Um, since um, I came on board in February, we've also increased our, um, our social media presence as well. Um, 
but and also with our partner parishes so like in as well as uh, different um hunger coalitions like end hunger durham and the different covid 19 task force uh task forces that we're part of and so just disseminating information through different avenues but it's always going to be um word of mouth being the biggest spreader and of course and the other funny thing is as you um saw you know when the when there's a line that long somebody could just be passing by and they're like what is this operation and then they're like well i fall into that category well Come and get some food assistance. So just a lot of different ways. I think that's the most beautiful thing that, that I've heard in a, a long time. Mm -hmm. I want you to talk about um, people who are food insecure mm -hmm. and choices maybe sometimes that they have to make to make sure that they have food. Yeah, the, uh, the unfortunate reality is, is being insecure in general means having to make decisions and choices that are difficult beyond measure or consideration, difficult uh, choices that um, people shouldn't have to make, but the reality is, is that they do. And the choices are going to be between feeding themselves or their family, paying bills, maintaining a roof over their head, uh, maintaining a working vehicle to get to work. Um, even even things such as things that are even overlooked that DCFP has taken a big um, supportive stance on is um, even period poverty concerning women. These are things that many of the population don't take into account, but it's not an option for women to not to go without. And so taking those kind of important things in consideration often overlook, DCFP tries to provide a very holistic way in the support that we administer to the community. So what can people in the community do if they want to be a part of this effort? So, um, you know, they can always uh, volunteer, um, but just, you know, if they do volunteer because safety protocols, we, um, you know, we do have a limit of how many volunteers can be there at any time of day to maintain that, you know, there's not a lot of traffic, but also um, donations, we're always, you know, we can all, we're always available to take donations. Um, and if anybody's interested, I can um, send a list of the type of items that we collect, um, as well as even donating financially. So every little bit helps, whether it's people, items, or financially, every little bit helps. How did, how did you come about working in, in this particular area? What drew you to this position? Well, I guess you could say I've been with Catholic Charities for nine years now, um, and I started with Durham Community Food Pantry in February of this year. Before, before the, uh, that, I was working in the Raleigh region of Catholic Charities, um, actually in the same building as our sister pantry, which many um, may already know, which is Catholic Parish Outreach. And so um, what drew me to Catholic Charities in general was I started with AmeriCorps when I was in my senior year of college in U.S. in Greensboro. And... It was very interesting because I, and I did, I remember saying this in another view, but growing up as a first generation born in the United States, um, but not really being exposed to all of the things that my parents, that, you know, you hear in the news that, um, you know, uh, Im immigrant parents or populations go through. It wasn't until I worked in AmeriCorps at a Catholic Charities office in Burlington that I was able to come face to face with the actual people that were being affected. It was no longer in the news. They were in front of me. And so once I started helping, I figured I found that I had a passion for doing that work. And Catholic Charities was the best avenue to continue doing that work and making an impact. And so everything else history and I find myself here now nine years later. Yeah. Well how are you strategically planning for um, 2021 and beyond? Well, there, as far as strategic planning, um, it's a little, it's a, still a little difficult to go too far in the future as things are still very uncertain, you know. Um, vaccine has been approved, but even then we have no idea how long before that can be a safety consideration. Um, also, what does it look like to go back to normal, what is gonna be the new normal? So there's a lot of things and questions that we're in the process as all of CAPS Charities trying to answer and develop. All right, so um, tell us again, and how can you be reached if people are interested in helping in some way? They can either give us a call at 919-286-1964 or email me at david.juarez at ccharitiesdor.org.
Okay. David Juarez Torres, Director of Durham Community Food Pantry. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. And good luck and God bless with all the great work that you're doing. Thank you, Kimberly. And thank you for having me. And thank you so much. We want to thank you, audience, for watching. And we want to thank you for listening to COVID Conversations, WNCU 90.5 FM. I'm Kimberly, right, your host. Until next time.